Well, Chukomeka is there, joins us now. He's the executive director of West Africa Network for Peace Building, based in Accra, Ghana. Thank you for coming on this morning. My pleasure. Well, this is a, a huge uh, challenge that the country faces, and it's got implications for uh, not just Nigeria, but across the coast here. But you've also been keeping tabs on this one. You've seen some of the recommendations made. What's your uh, analysis in terms of what you've seen, first and foremost, and how you think we'll sort it out? Uh, I think we can look at the issue uh, in three different parts. Uh, the first one is to look at um, some of the causes, taking a historical perspective. Then we can look about at the efforts and the gaps, and then look at um, some of these recommendations. I think if you look, I think first of all is to acknowledge that this is not just a Nigerian problem, like you said. If you look at all the countries in the Sahel region, um, including if you go as far as um, Sudan, we have also done some work, it has always been a huge issue. Uh, first of all is that these are the kind of human beings, uh, the movement of human beings that you may not be able to control. In the past, it used to be a kind of conflict that you can actually anticipate because it's dynamic, it has a period, normally um, during the dry season or if you have droughts, uh, when the nomads are moving. In but, but this one seems pronounced now. Yeah, that's Why? what I'm saying, that in the past, it used to be something that you have. Because what is happening now is that I'm surprised that up to today, our whole effort about climate change is only at the international arenas. So we have, well, for example... We don't seem to be bringing it back home? I doubt it seriously. Why do you say so? If we have, and, and I'm confused, and maybe you wish you help me here, about the, the jobs, apart from erosion, of our uh, ministers of environment and ministries of environment, both at the local level, at the state level, and at the national level. Because if we have been proactive enough, there are some level of possibilities that should be on the table about climate change. And that's why it will never stop. So the trend is moving from just dry season, which we used to predict, to at all times. And it's not going to stop very soon. So the water points are drying. Lake Chad Basin, for example, is a very good example. So what are the efforts? If we have, if we have a good... Um, predictability about what the climate change is doing, not just in Nigeria, but all over the world. We should begin now, not just talking about ranches, but we should be talking about even water points. And that's one area that I feel that the Sudanese government have done very well, you know, by providing water points for these cattle and so on and so forth. So you cannot stop the movement of the nomads, but you can regulate it. And the more you want to stop, the more they develop resistance. And don't forget, they also have a history and nature of being warlike because this is the kind of life they believe in all over the Is that what uh, explains the AK-47 assault rifles you see some of them uh, in possession of? I think there is, there is this cliche that says necessity is the modern invention. So the more they move into localities that is not theirs, they receive resistance. And in such resistance, they develop more means of overcoming. But even amongst the headsmen, they also have their own challenges, which includes that there are some even beyond just developing mechanisms to protect them, themselves. They also have now criminalities. There are elements of crime and criminalities that also exploit the already existing situation. So if you go to Burkina Faso, for example, and I think we should begin to make linkages already. For example, what is the linkage between violent extremism and the movement of the nomads? Because if we have developed enough protective measures and enough alert measures against violent extremism, who tells us that they cannot use the movement of the and is this a common feature? Because some of those who have been paraded are said to be non-Nigerian nationals. Yeah, this is a common feature. So if you look at all the countries, let's look at Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, some part of the northern Ghana. You look at Niger, Chad, Cameroon, Nigeria. 
These even people, Senegal. even Senegal. So these people move around the same area, the movement. And again, you can't also whether you put your walls, or you put your barriers or your borders, they must move. You know. And again, what is also happening is that there is also now the issues relating to violent extremism. You know. So. A lot of people are beginning to even make connection. How do they even import the devices they are using? Because the roads, the borders seem to be tightened. So are they using these animals? So these are the kind of things that... So the only thing we can do is if we agree today that climate change is real and that in near future it is even going to get worse, then we need now to begin to develop those strategies, not just about creating the cattle parts, but about ensuring that we put in place things that is going to make the cattle rearers stay at places where we can regulate. And then those who are outside it, we can begin to deal with that. There are countries in the world, for example, who have seen that they cannot control the smoking of marijuana. So what did they do? Rather than stop it, they regulate. If, if you look at the movement of uh, the nomads, uh, some even come as far as Mali, get into Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. Niger, and even Chad. And uh, we, we've also seen the president talk about uh, the problem concerning the Chad Basin there mm -hmm. uh, and the environmental uh, issue that is happening there. Uh, looking at the water point solution, which you say, uh, is it in Chad? That, Sudan. Uh, I mean, Sudan has employed to help in that this is uh, nipped in the bud. Tell us more on that. Uh, let's see if it's something that back home here in the country we can also employ. Uh, my problem is that even the few ones we were supposed to do in the past, we've not done it. But I think that the current president and the current administration, they have a very rare opportunity to make progress. First of all, is that the president also is a farmer and he understands how difficult, uh, the difficulties that these normals also face. You know. But what they did in Sudan is that they carved communities where they have uh, the greatest number of uh, cattle rearers. So what they do is that they provide artificial water points for the cattle, okay? And then because you also know that in, in South Sudan, for example, cattle raiding was one of the major sources of violence, okay? Because in their own culture, cattle is also something just beyond meat, the meat we, we eat, because even in marriages, that's exactly the symbol that you can use to marry. So what they did that in communities, they provided artificial water points. And then they brought leadership into this, those communities, how people can regulate the use of the water points. You know. And again, it is not just free. It is not free. Yes, people pay either in cattle or in cash for to the use, to for, use for those water use. points. You know. So I think that what is also happening in, in our own context is the ability to work long term. So everybody wants to feel that if I'm able to do water points, how am I going to show, what am I going to show for the next election? You know, but if you're able to do that and now put in place mechanisms through which the government can tax and also generate income from the use of the water points, from the use of the ranches that you're providing, from the use of the, the pastures you're providing for the cattle, it is not free. And those who tell you we don't have the money, you can ask them to pay with cattle. And then it can be sold. You don't see any resistance? I don't think there will be resistance because they are also in their need. They are also in their need of those kind of uh, facilities. It is not easy for somebody to move from Kano to the southeastern part of the country in search of pastures. And you cannot ask a headsman or, as it is commonly used, a full animal to stop those movements and see the cattle die. The person must move, and in moving, the person conquers. You know, it's, it's just recently that we started feeling the heat in the south and in the east. In the past, it has always been even with the northern farmers. Because if you look at the Sudan example with uh, the creation of water points, and you put that side by side with some other European countries where they have big ranch, mm -hmm. uh, ranches, like in Denmark and yes. some other places, What's difficult? You, you made mention of the president, uh, who is also a farmer, and some, for some, they've seen his uh, ranch. He, I don't think he has some of those uh, cattle going from place to place. So the culture of having ranches, is it also difficult for us to start thinking of 
again that was my 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 major uh, challenge about understanding why is it that if we see this as a problem we do not have in place or even visit places like that it has worked you made mention of denmark it's difficult for us today to tax a headsman we can't how many cattle does he have where is he going to be the next day we don't even know so let's not let's even remove the the issues they are causing let's even put an economic sense to these regulations again you'll be able to know who are your citizens